So why Phoenix? We're in Phoenix because Phoenix is the closest city to Ehrenberg, Arizona, where we were last week for Schoolie Palooza. And if you saw last week's episode, you know that we all got a stomach virus. It went through all of us and we ended up vacating the Airstream and going to stay in a hotel to recuperate and get better. So we're still kind of recovering from that. We're staying in Peoria, which is a town in the metropolitan area of Phoenix, but it's about 30 minutes out of the city center. And it's, it's really got anything you could want as far as you know stores and a mall and restaurants and all those kind of comforts, which is what we were looking for. There's actually a Cracker Barrel basically in the driveway of our hotel. So we're just gonna camp out here. <laughs> Ironically, we're not camping out. And there's an Airstream dealership in Scottsdale, just a half hour away. So while we're in Phoenix, we can get the Airstream completely looked over by professionals and all have the opportunity to get in there and clean. So by the time we leave Phoenix, we can be super pumped to get back in the Airstream and go camping again. Hi guys. And here we are, home sweet home. This is gonna be our home for the next, I don't know how long, in Phoenix while we get back on our feet. Uncle John's been <laughs> Olive sitting down on the box. That's goofy, Olive. It shakes, like maybe it's coffee beans or like Legos or something. Yeah. No, a clock. You think it's a clock? Yeah. What you doing, Mama? We're opening a present from Uncle John. He's been trying to get it to us since Christmas, but we move around so much that we're we're hard to get to. Oh, what's that? What is what it, Linda? What is all this? Oh, amber cooler. Is it a Gila monster? Maple syrup. Oh, look! It's uh, he, we're, we can make breakfast. That's the last one. Yeah, you want to hold it as maple syrup, just like you. What did we got? Egg crystals and pancake mix and ghee. Boondock breakfast. I found out his name. What? His name is Scaly Aww. because he has scales. What scales? Scales Mama, are those speckles. No, we'll See how skin is kind of bumpy? Yeah. How many scales does he have? Are you counting the scales? Yeah. We have a bunch of things on our list that would be nice to get looked at and get fixed in the Airstream, but there's one thing that we definitely need to get looked at and that's our thermostat because it's not working. It mysteriously stopped working right after we arrived in Phoenix. Fortunately, we're in a hotel, so it doesn't matter right now. What are you doing, Mabel? I'm collecting lights. But we definitely want the thermostat looked at and fixed before we go on any major trips. Right now it just shows error codes, EE or FF. So we definitely want the Airstream dealership to check out the thermostat, figure out what's wrong and fix it so we can use our furnace again. But besides the thermostat, all the things in the Airstream that are on our list are really not that big of a deal. We have a bunch of things on our list that would be nice to get fixed at the Airstream dealership, but most of them are just little things like, like these blinds, for example, they got, they got ripped off. This morning I found a little bit of a leak here in the front window somehow. I found it because we had all the girls' pillows sitting here on the couch and they're a little bit wet. Not a huge amount of water. Might be hard to see in the camera, but there's a, there's a little line of water that's actually going down on the inside of the screen. Somehow it's coming from the window seal, I think, or somewhere inside near the roof. It's been a while that we've had the Airstream and we've gotten really lucky in terms of the main systems haven't really broken. If we're gonna go somewhere rugged like Alaska, I really don't wanna have a breakdown of a critical system. So the most important things, anything that has to do with trailering, so the chassis, the tires, the axles, the brakes, I want all of that stuff to be in top mechanical shape and looked at by a professional before we attempt a big adventure. <laughs> Behind our hotel is this trail, and this is the first time we're going on it, so I'm excited to see where it goes. I think it probably goes to Peoria Sports Complex, and that's where there's some spring training events. There was an RV show there this weekend. There's a Cracker Barrel basically in the parking lot of our hotel, so every morning I wake up and look out the window and I see Cracker Barrel. We are in Peoria, which is outside of Phoenix, just about half an hour. 
and it looks like it's a kind of a suburb that has any store you can imagine, like Costco and Chipotle and all the all the stores that are big chains across America. So boring, sorry. A tree. What's over there? It's a a perfect floor. A perfect floor? Yeah. I want to go down there and live there, but I can't. By a cat? Did you say by a cat? Yeah. Oh, is the tree green? You never saw that tree Whoa, before. With my glasses on, it looks super green. Is it a lizard tree? Whoa. You're right. Yeah, sure. Look at Papa in those glasses. Oh, it does look super green. Linden looks green. Sheesh. What's your other favorite restaurant? Uh. Oh. <laughs> look, what's right there? Oh, Cracker Barrel. Barrel. What do you eat when you go to Cracker Barrel? Biscuit and ketchup and salad and mac and cheese. That was Cracker Barrel has the best dinner ever. It does. Let's go now. <laughs> There's a sign that says service drop off there. We are at Airstream of Scottsdale and we're here to get a 101 point inspection. And the idea is we want to get everything looked over before we start our major trek from Montana to Alaska. It's always fun going to an Airstream dealership and I'm tempted to look in every Airstream and pick all the best features from every Airstream and create a dream Airstream in my head. The Classic is the model of Airstream that we have, so it's really neat to go into the dealership and see what a brand new Airstream Classic looks like. Since ours has had so many customizations and renovations, and it's 12 years old. This is what we have, so let's check it out. Let's see what it looks like. We don't have that. <laughs> Just kidding. They have fake ice cubes in these mason jar cups. So much seating for the adults. It's crazy, but where are the kids gonna sleep? That could definitely be a bunk bed, but it's smaller than ours. It looks like it's a, almost maybe a foot smaller than ours. It's pretty neat to see what a brand new classic looks like because it looks so different from our Airstream. I gotta say, I much prefer our Airstream. This is a 33 foot classic, 2020. Ours is a 31 foot classic, 2008. What makes our special is there was only a certain number of years where the classic model had the elongated closet. So that's how we're able to make the, the bunk bed in the middle of the Airstream. If we tried to make a bunk bed out of this closet, I think it would still be possible. But first of all, the kids would be in the bathroom, which wouldn't be as nice as being in the middle. Secondly, we, we would lose our couch on the end. And third, their bunk beds would be really short and their legs would be curled up. Having the back open like this is really cool, but probably not for us at our family stage in life because I think all three kids would just escape and we'd have to worry about it constantly. But once there's five, six, seven, that would be a really cool feature. We're at the Children's Museum of Phoenix and it looks really awesome. We just got here and we're all hungry so we went straight to the cafe. It was a little bit of a punch in the gut because we had to pay for everyone, all the kids and both adults. And we're used to going to children's museums that have reciprocity for the children's museum that we're a member of. So that was a surprise. But it looks like a ton of fun so we're just gonna try to get our money's worth. So far trying to get our money's worth isn't going that well because we showed up hungry and went straight to the cafe and it looks like the kids are already getting tired and wanting to take a nap soon. We're not always the most efficient and organized with our field trip skills, but we learn lessons each time and we try to make improvements. Food's ready. But the flip side is this place looks really cool. Look, there's a sign that says selfie spot, so I gotta try it out. It's on the, my feet. <laughs> this playground is like a three-dimensional maze. You climb up and up and it goes up all three stories and there's different levels and layers and paths. It kind of looks like it would be out of that movie Baron Munchausen. There's a boat, there's a bathtub, there's a couple of different lookout areas. And all the materials are materials that you don't imagine things are built with, like a bathtub and a boat. And also crayons or bottle caps or things that you might think are junk, but they are, they've turned into building materials. What, Maple? The DVDs. DVDs? Yeah, they're kind of like DVDs. When we first got here, Lyndon spotted this penthouse room up at the top of the play structure. It's so big, Lyndon. And she said, I want to go up there. But then once she got into the playground, she thought it was too scary or too hard to get up there. But then Papa showed her. He came in and he showed her which way to go. Papas are so slow in here. And she took on the challenge and she climbed up there and made it all the way to the 
special room that she saw when we first arrived. So that made her feel really good about herself and it made her really excited. We made it to the end. So she conquered her fear in this playground. Lyndon's favorite thing to do is play dress up and put on little shows. So every time we go somewhere like this, like a children's museum, she makes me ask right away if they have costumes. They have this crazy Rube Goldberg type looking machine that takes up the whole wall of the entrance and it sucks in scarves and you can change valves in it so the air blows different directions or gets blocked and the scarf gets sucked in through these tubes and then goes up and up and then gets poof, spat out the top and you don't know where it's going to come out so that's, that's pretty fun. wrapped up at the Children's Museum of Phoenix. They had this car wash for kids set up and the kids could ride little tricycles through a car wash like with the whole spaghetti noodles and everything. And there were different types of tricycles, all different sizes for different kids. And there was even a tricycle with a trailer behind it. And Lyndon said, I want to ride the tricycle with a trailer like Papa. And she had Olive climb in her trailer and she rode through the car wash. They loved it. Well, at this point in our travels, I definitely consider myself a children's museum expert. I've been to so many children's museums across the country and this one really holds up. I think it was a ton of fun. It's got so much stuff and all the materials and all the exhibits are really great, but it is a little pricey. I wouldn't mind the price so much if they had a membership that allowed for some kind of reciprocity. If we were to buy a membership today, our ticket cost would go against the membership cost, but it's still really expensive. And once you have that membership, there's no other museum that takes reciprocity for the Children's Museum of Phoenix. So if you have a family of five like us, you can plan on spending $75 just to get in the door, which is kind of a bummer. I am glad we came because I'm starting to really care about children's museums. I like to see the different ways they're laid out and what they offer. There's even a whole outside playground that we didn't notice until we're leaving. Oh, they also offer classes. They offer drama, music, and dance on Saturdays for preschoolers, as well as classes for babies and toddlers on other days. So we're thinking maybe we'll come back next Saturday and do a drama class. That's a robot on Mars. That's a robot on Mars. It has a plumber mm -hmm. on it. It's collecting rocks. It is collecting rocks. How did you know that? Just know. I didn't even tell you that. She knows his curiosity is collecting rocks on Mars. Mm -hmm.